when you signed for Udinese, my flatmate called me from the other room and said, Joe, Joe, quick, come have a look. And he had Sky Sports on, and you were just doing your interview outside the ground about when you were moving. First thing I did was ring Dad, and I was like, why have you not told me? You know, so why, you didn't why, even why? know I was I, I didn't even know. That might be quite good to go in the start bit, actually, to be fair, if you need it. Um, didn't make me look good, though. No, well, <laughs> you, you, you were a tad busy at the time, in fairness, looking after other stuff, so I wouldn't expect you to have called me first, but, you know, I'd rather have not found out through Sky Sports, but hey ho. So, from your perspective as a player, what do you know about Proud Hornets and the sort of stuff that they do? Are you, you know, aware of their existence? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you can see the banners in the in the stadium, and especially with no fans at the moment, there's one big one in the corner down there. But yeah, I think all of us players know it's the sort of the LGBT communities um, group that they have of fans here. So. Um, yeah, I think from a player's point of view, we're fully aware of who they are and, and that they're there, but there's not that knowledge, I don't think, of, as to what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and, and how much of an impact they have. And would you say that like, here at Watford, there's that in, in the changing room, everyone understands the importance of why that it's there? Most players will know that it's there to make sure everybody feels like they can come to games and it's like football's for everyone, you know, so they would, everybody in there would know that it's to make sure the LGBT community feel like they are welcome at games, especially here at Watford. Why did you feel it was right for you to join? I think now is definitely the right time for me to join, obviously because of you, you know, you've been with Watford for a while, but because you've been out and about, now that you're back, I wanted to get stuck in and get involved because I understand it's important and I think there aren't many you know top level players that can say that they've got you know like an out gay brother as well I feel like it's important for people to understand so I know the the history that Watford's got you know with Sir Elton John and everything like that so I think it's kind of steeped in history in terms of that anyway so I think Proud Hornets does have that advantage over maybe some other clubs that don't already have that sort of pre-installed LGBT history behind it. So when, when you did join, without bigging myself up in a sort of way, did they make a link between us two or did they already know <laughs> or, or how did that go? Yeah, so I think the, the surname is a bit of a giveaway, but I think because I've done stuff out there before, you know, working for different radio stations and doing different campaigns and that sort of thing, um, I think I knew quite a lot of people from who were in the championship at the time. Like I knew um, the West Brom guys um, and the people from Villa, you know. So th I think that connection kind of helped. And then obviously the good, the perk of a community is that everyone talks to each other. Um, so I think word kind of spread about that. And I just wanted to take a back seat for a while um, and wait until you'd, you know settled in and made your mark on things before, you know, I sort of started to say anything about it. Has there ever been a point where you've been attending one of my games or any other games where you've not felt comfortable being in the stand or uncomfortable at any point? Not at the Vic. Not at the Vic. But elsewhere, um, maybe. I'm not just saying that either. Like, seriously, I think the one thing I, I like about coming to Watford is it really does the whole inclusivity thing just right. You go to some other stands and, and it's like really ham-fisted attempts at being inclusive, you know. When it comes to me personally, I've never felt like I've got an issue here. I think that's partially because of things like Proud Hornets being about and knowing what's been done in the past, you know, like the massive rainbow flag and that sort of thing. And then seeing the Proud Hornets flag out on the stands during lockdown games and I think as well, it keeps coming back into my mind that, you know, Sir Elton John has like a massive part of the club as well. Um, but there have been games that I've gone to, you know, for other clubs, I won't name them, but, you know, you just, 
I don't feel particularly comfortable. I don't feel particularly safe is the wrong word, but you just kind of think that you're just constantly a bit on edge. Saying all of that, do you feel as though football in general is now becoming more inclusive, especially than it has been in previous years? 100, yeah, totally. Like, I've always said that any efforts to improve the accessibility and inclusivity of the sport is great. And it's 100% a step in the right direction. The thing that concerns me is that we've been doing lots of, you know, big events and massive campaigns, Rainbow Laces, for example, part of Stonewall, really, really great stuff. But these have been going on for a while and you have to, you have to look at it and think, why, why aren't people coming out? You know, the last thing I want is for people to feel like they're being forced out of, out of the closet. You know, and I, I hate that phrase anyway, but you have to think, you know, if you're talking about in terms of, you know, using football as an example, if the tactics aren't working, you change them. You know, you don't stick with a rubbish formation. You've got to look at why it's not working and come up with something else. This whole idea that, like statistically speaking, there will be gay footballers in the top four tiers of football. There, there will be, you know. But it's just about making sure that, you know, if, if I was, if I was suggesting a way forward, it's making those players feel like if they did come out, that they would be supported by the club, supported, not endorsed. You know, these players need to feel like when they come out, they can just get on with their job. I feel like as a player, I think if a player was to come out whilst playing, I, th I feel like they would know that their team would be 100% fine. Everybody totally. inside the club, there is, everybody would like, everybody would literally be like, okay, sweet. And like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's just, there's no difference here, you know. Exactly. Whereas, I, I and I feel like I don't want to speak on behalf of anybody, but I feel like I know the reason they wouldn't want to come out is because of the media backlash and everybody yeah. outside the club. Yeah. And I feel like even players at other clubs still wouldn't be bothered. Yeah. It's just the media reaction, the fans reactions from not necessarily yeah. their club but opposition clubs and it becomes a form um, of abuse yeah. while he's then playing you know Tuesday. especially at away games and stuff yeah, like yeah, this but you know players get abused on the pitch for an array of anyway. things anyway you just kind of got to think you chuck one more thing into that what difference does it make So I've not actually seen you play here yet at all because you've been away for a bit. But like oddly enough, I've seen you, you know, play at Juventus for Udinese. Yeah, I've not even seen you play at the Vic yet. But when it came to that game, the Man City one where they had the massive rainbow flag in the rookery end, mm. you, you were here for that game. But how how do you feel that the atmosphere around? LGBT support has changed in the time that you've, you know, been what, like playing in top level football. Well, yeah, like I said, I was on the bench for that game, so I, w I didn't walk out sort of as a starter with the music player and everything. But I came out just before, and the the banner was already up, and it was l like your eyes were just drawn to it. You know, it was the first thing you could see. It was absolutely massive, and I think just doing little things like that that aren't exactly hard to do, you know, but they just make such a big statement and make everybody aware of the campaign. I think it's it's a simple but effective thing to do. And yeah, I think in football, it's become more inclusive for all fans. And I think as players, we're aware that there's campaigns like this going on and it, we want everybody we want as many people to be in our stadium each week supporting us because at the end of the day when when it kicks off everyone's got the same um, goal that day as is to win the game on the pitch and they want to watch us win the game on the pitch so 
that I think, um, yeah, it has, it has changed massively. And I think if we, const if we keep doing campaigns like this every year, it will only increase the knowledge uh, for everybody involved, but also um, it will just keep keep people aware of these these campaigns, and yeah, it will only it will only benefit everybody at the end of the day. You know, what do you think players could do more of to raise awareness for the campaign, or you know, say their bit? Um, well, I think obviously we we take part in the in the campaign every year with with the rainbow laces themselves and the armband and whatnot. But I think, like I said before, just keep talking about it. And I think we all know that social media is the biggest platform out there at the minute. And players have so many followers. A simple post, tweet, anything goes such a long way and, and reaches so many people. I think just little things like that, it's not going to be a massive the sort of half an hour long video and and things like this just a simple little tweet or or whatever just yeah reaches so many people and, and some of these players are literally idolized by people and it may change the opinions of a few people but it's done some good you know it's, yeah. and it will do far more good than it will bad so you don't have to have a direct connection to the cause in order to say something about it. I think it says a lot more. I mean, for example, like after this chat that we've had, if you, you know, retweeted or tweeted about Rainbow Laces, people would think, yeah, you know, you've got a gay brother, it makes sense for you to do that. But if someone like, you know, if someone in the team who doesn't have a gay brother or any gay relatives or any, you know, connection to LGBT people at all, if they tweeted something or showed support for the campaign, that goes a long way. There will be backlash, like don't get me wrong, there will be people who have stuff to say about this chat that we're having today, but it will be the minority when it used to be the majority. And that's literally the whole reason why we're doing this sort of thing and having yeah. campaigns like this is to cut down the amount of stuff like that, you know, the backlash that this might get or whatever, it's just yeah. to, to stop all of that essentially, isn't it? So. Yeah. I mean, all we can hope for is that, you know, if people watch us just having this chat and just like had a listen to what we were saying, that hopefully they'll realise that people in football just want to play football and they just want to live their lives. They want to live their own private lives. You know, what they do on the pitch as a footballer has no bearing on their private life and vice versa as well. You know, they're there to do a job at the end of the day. If they come out, just let them get on with it and let's just not make it a bit of, you know, let's just not make it a big deal. Click here for more videos.